Hi everyone, it's me again. I'm attempting a new uh, Amstrad CPC 464 video game playthrough, and this time I'm gonna try out Phantom Club. Um, I don't think there's a lot of play. I don't think there's hardly any playthroughs of these games, of this game, because uh, <coughs> you know it's a hard game, and uh, I just thought, well, there are plenty of Amst known Amstrad games. Like head over heels and all that, that all got walked through, so I decided to give it a go. So, uh, <coughs> yeah, um, yeah, you play this uh, character, uh, and your objective is to uh, rank up, uh, superhero rank, and um, it's similar to the last game I played, movie, is isometric, only this time uh, there's no. Uh, the gameplay, there's no like detective guys or futuristic and all that, but the 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 combat gameplay is somewhat similar. Although you don't have the inventory thing anymore, you got like a laser gun. You got to press uh, you know, the return button or the enter button to uh, shoot the freeze ray gun. Now they just freeze the guys and you get points for it. Um, what you have to do in this game is like I think I already said this. Uh, you gotta try and rank, uh, attain a higher superhero rank. There's uh, nine rank, nine or ten ranks in total, and you need to uh, get at least four thousand points. Find the designated uh, monitor. You gotta shoot the monitor, and it gives you like a, a mission objective. You gotta find this man, or you gotta kill so and so, and all that. And you gotta find. You know your mission objective because this is like there's like 500 plus rooms in this game, and uh, yeah, it's not an easy game at all. I used to play it a lot uh, when I was a young kid back in the late 80s. My sister remembers this as well. She used to play this too, but you know it's a very hard game, and uh, I can see why people, you know, try to attempt to complete this because it's very hard, very unforgiving, and also a bit boring because, um, you know, levels, the, the, the level designs look the same, and, you know, you get these rooms where you have to kill the enemy before you progress, and uh, you have to do it again when you go into the same room again, like this room, for example, it's very unforgiving, you got to kill this robot as he flies, that's the only way to shoot at him, but he also, you know, ducks as you shoot at him, uh, and then you've got the spider, you, which you can't kill, you have to uh, repeatedly avoid it, and uh, like this part is a bit of a pain, but the reason why I'm going through this bit is so that I can get a couple of nearby point globes, so that I can easily get 4,000 points. I don't bother killing the enemies unless I have to, so um, I want to, uh, you know, you know, get go for the power globes, uh, the point globes. Sorry, they're like shaped like the, you know, planet Earth spheres, and they're like attached to a pole. And you gotta find these globes uh, to raise your points. Now um, they all look the same, and each of them gives you a ten thousand or 25,000 points a piece and you really you only need about at least 4,000 40,000 points to access the mission objectives unless uh, stated otherwise there is a mission in particular that you only need to get 50,000 points I think that's uh, you gotta get 40,000 to unlock the mission objective and then you gotta get 50,000 points to um, Complete the mission to rank up. So yeah, um, these fucking spiders, man. Speaking of spiders, I read the papers today about a red bat spider being in the UK or something, and apparently it's one of the most uh, deadliest uh, spiders in Australia. I'm sure they've got many deadly spiders there, but red bat is one of the worst. It's a very very small spider, and it's got like a red stripe in its black back. One bite or two can kill you, especially even more so if you've got like health problems. So, yeah, there's all this scaremongering about these uh, exotic spiders in the UK and all that. Fucking, it's all this scaremongering shit. Bit of a head door. 
So yeah, this is slightly easier than uh, the la you know the last robot fight you had, um, simply because uh, you know, you'd have a fucking spider, and there's a lot more maneuverability as well in this room compared to the compact space that you had to uh, you, you know go around to avoid the spider. It was a bit of a head door. Um, so yeah, that that icon on the left uh, means that it's only a a timer. The, the room's locked until the timer goes. But if you get that bird sign, that means you got to kill the enemy before you, to, you know, to move on. So, uh, yeah, not easy. Alright, killed that monster. Robot, rather. Yeah, that's the one of the globes I need to get. I believe this one gives me uh, 25,000 points, which is nice. Uh, near at going through um, the next few rooms, I should be able to get, uh, you know, either 10,000 more or t hopefully 25,000, which is what I need. And then I can proceed to the monitor and it's way to go. That's why I did a. Uh, I made these, uh, you know, playthroughs into parts, well, each mission into parts. Uh, this is going to be like Salator Part 1, and then I'll individually do each mission because it can be quite long. And uh, I'm just going to treat it as uh, unique objectives of this game, you know, meaning that you don't have to do uh, not really quite, it's just like a, just each individual challenges you have to do. Uh, to get the most out of this game. So, uh, <coughs> yeah. I don't know too much about the story. Apparently, you got to rank up to take on this evil warlord Zarg or some shit. I, I can't remember the plot very well. And I don't think you have to kill Zarg in this game. You just basically got to rank up, and that's it. But I'm not too. I'm not. I'm not sure. So. I mean, in the last game, you had to kill like it tells you you have to kill like a mob boss, whereas the mob boss looks like in the movie. I'm talking about in the movie, you had to kill like a mob boss, and the mob boss looked up, looked like every other enemy in that game. So I, I just think developers back in the day just wrote a lot of load of shit after they made the game. You know, they didn't care about the storyline so much. Uh, the, the game that the game is like the vehicle for the storyline compared to today's most of today's games, whereas uh, like your um the story you know like the the storyline today like in Metal Gear games like there's very little gameplay and uh, it's just mostly story orientated, whereas uh, these games are just more gameplay orientated than less of the story bullshit, less of the dialogue and all that wank. So, uh, yeah, this is. I lost a life here. Uh, very unforgiving, this game, as I said uh, previously. But, uh, by going to the, this next uh, doorway, uh, you know, south southern doorway, I should be able to get an extra life. And I have to hit one of these uh, spheres. While they damage me, they, they give me an extra life. I don't know why I have to damage my energy bar. It's kind of unfair, but at least I get an extra life out of it. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, I got hit these things four times, but the spider's stuck here, which is great. So it's easy pickings for me. Um, okay, I killed him. But we'll have to kill him again. This guy I can avoid. I can go this way. I don't need to kill him, so fuck him. Going down south. Yeah, okay, there's another robot. Don't have to kill him, so I just have to jump over there. Over the fence of sorts, I don't know what it is. Alright, more spiders, so I'm gonna avoid these. Yeah, I've read a review on the Spectrum version of this game, and uh, the person who wrote the review didn't like the game very much, thought it was very boring, uh, repetitive, 
and he gave the game a score of 6 out of 10 I believe, which isn't too bad, and I think it's a fair enough review. So yeah, I have to kill this bird, and they're very tricky, but I had to kill it anyway, because otherwise I won't be able to progress. You can think of these enemies as bosses or sorts, um, but I wouldn't look too much into the whole boss theme of this game, because I don't think there are hardly any bosses, they're just enemies you have to kill. So yeah, I got uh, extra life there, and there's another of these globes in this doorway here, so I just felt like killing for a lad. They're quite easy to beat anyway. So, right, I think they're really the easiest enemies to kill in the game, they don't give you any aggro at all. So yeah, that's the, the globe, and I believe this will give me 10 foul. Yep. That's alright, there's now I can make my way to the monitor. Along the way, I should be able to find another of these globes that'll give me uh, uh, at least uh, 4 or 5 thousand, 50 thousand, 40, 50 thousand points for me to uh, access the mystery objective. So, yeah, these bird guys are quite tricky because even though you sh you're thinking you're shooting them in range, you're not. So, you have to like use the shadow. The character's sh shadow to, uh, you know, accurately target these guys, but I managed, so it's all right. All right, just traverse through here. Yeah, there. Um, some of these uh, rooms have like spikes and all in this game, and uh, you have to be very careful. Usually, I go along the ed edges of these rooms because uh, they're mostly placed in the center of these rooms. Usually. And uh, that's how I avoid most of these traps. There are plants as well. These plants you might have noticed in the footage that uh, you know these plants like can bite you. So I tend to avoid those. I go around them. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. Um, next up, part two of the cellar tour mission. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoy it.